Hi friends, welcome back to my channel or welcome if you are new here, I'm Victoria. It is Friday, so that means it's the start of a new reading vlog. It's actually so gloomy outside. It's like high 60s, it's supposed to be raining. So it really does feel like a little taste of fall. I think it's only supposed to be like this for a day or so, but it's still kind of nice. Um, I do kind of look a mess. You're probably like, Victoria, you look the same as you always do, but. <laughs> But I am getting over a little bit of a stomach bug and I'm feeling a lot better today. But yeah, I've had a few tummy issues the past couple of days, um, but I'm starting to feel better. This reading vlog is going to be my most anticipated new releases. And I'm so excited about this. I've been kind of waiting until these came available for my library because <laughs> you know me, I, I love to use Libby. So I was waiting for them to come available at my library and they all kind of happened at the same time so which is so lucky um I I know for sure I'm gonna get to two books I would like to get three if possible these are all kind of a little bit on the longer ish side though so I'm not sure but I know I am definitely going to read I was a teenage slasher by Stephen Graham Jones and uh bury your gaze by Chuck Tingle they're both new releases I think they're both slashers um I did start I was a teenage slasher last night I'm about 40 ish percent in now um and I'll go into more of that later, but I'll give a quick synopsis of it. We're essentially following a guy who was a serial killer. Like he went on a slashing spree in high school um, and we're following him now talking about the experience and what led up to him going on this rampage, killing people. So <laughs> I like the unique perspective of hearing from the serial killer. And then Bury Your Gaze is actually based in Hollywood. We have this person who works on a TV show and they've been nominated for an Oscar. And on their TV show, like the people that he works with, they're like, you need to kill off all the gay characters from your show. And um, he refuses and kind of makes enemies this way within Hollywood. And then we also, it seems like we have maybe something supernatural chasing after him it's very vague the synopsis is like something's coming after him his history's come to back to haunt him and chasing him through like the hollywood hills <laughs> and i'm like i don't know if it's going to be um like supernatural or like an actual slasher and i don't even know if it's going to be a slasher but it kind of sounds like one i think so i don't know we'll see i love camp damascus so i was super excited about this one and it is a bit longer uh compared to camp damascus so i'm like i'm really excited for a longer book by chuck tingle and then i have a couple of other options for the third book if i get there but i have we used to live here by marcus clewer i hope i'm saying that correctly um I keep seeing this everywhere. It's been recommended to me multiple times by viewers, by friends. They're like, you have to read this. It's like saying it's actually very scary. And I'm like, oh my gosh, that sounds amazing. But I'm kind of iffy about vlogging it because I've also heard it's best to go into it with n not knowing what's going on. So I'm like, do I want to vlog it? You know, I don't want to ruin anything for anyone. So I'm unsure. We shall see. This is about like a family that knocks on the door and of this house and is like, hey, can I show my family around this house? I like grew up here. And then something goes down, like someone disappears and that's all we know. <laughs> I don't know, I've heard it's very scary. I think it I, I think it might be supernatural too, I'm not sure, but it sounds so good. I was gonna save it for winter because the cover looked so wintry. <laughs> and I was like, oh, perfect winter horror, but I just keep see hearing so much good stuff. And one of y'all mentioned that, you know, the uh, winter seasonality wasn't like a huge part of the book. So I'm like, okay. I might push that up and um that this is one I don't have through the library so I'll either use um one of my Everend credits or use my Spotify you know monthly amount on it but man it sounds good and then the other one is a new release another one of course a new release and it's also a slasher and this one's actually a YA horror and it's uh The Blonde Dies First by Joelle Wellington this just sounds so fun we have these kids well kids they're almost adults <laughs> they graduated high school they're about to go off to college summer before college and they play with a Ouija board and disturb some sort of demon and they are being chased down by a demon slasher <laughs> so the killer is a demon or something supernatural so Sounds so fun, super campy, and like a lighthearted fun horror, which I love it. I'm highly anticipating all of these. They sound right up my alley, and a couple of them I love the authors already, so 
we'll see how it all ends up and how many I end up reading in this vlog, but I'm super excited. Let me talk about um, I Was a Teenage Slasher. So far, like I said, I'm 40% in. It's totally different than what I anticipated it being. Like in my brain, I thought it was going to be kind of like Nine of the Mannequins by Stephen Graham Jones, where it's like really campy, the tone's kind of funny uh, horror, and it's not like that. Like this is definitely serious and a bit dark, and I was I was surprised because I was coming in thinking it was going to be something very different, um, which is totally fine. Uh, but we start out like with the POV of the serial killer, and he's walking us. He's like writing a memoir or like a, a book or something to. What, his oldest friend from high school. Her name's Amber and he kind of loved her too um, when they were younger, but he's writing her like this le letter or memoir of like what went down and he's uh, recounting each day leading up to the murders. I start on a Friday, he goes and he's talking about like how him and his family are treated, um, how Amber's treated, she's Native American and um, you know, he's bullied and something goes down at a party where he is put in a bad position and definitely bullied. And then that kind of sparked the rage for him to end up uh, going on this killing spree. Um, it is a lot of backstory right now. We haven't had a ton of stuff happening. There's been like a few things that I'm like, oh, that's interesting. That's weird. And I'm like, wait, is that something supernatural or am I just like not getting what's going on. <laughs> I'm not sure. Like, I think that it'll, like, it'll explain some things that have happened, like, later on, but there's a few instances, there's a few parts where I'm like, wait, what? I hope that it gets a little bit more action-y. It's definitely been, like, a slow burn. It's definitely reminding me more of Angel, not Angel of Indian Lake, because that was the newest one. What was it? What was the first one? My Heart is a Chainsaw. Was that the first one? Yeah. My heart is a chainsaw. It's reminding me of that a lot, but with a uh, guy's POV and he's like the bad guy. But um, the tone of it and kind of the setup and pacing, it's reminding me of that, um, which is totally fine. My heart is a chainsaw was my least favorite of the series. I do have a vlog where I read the whole series in one vlog <laughs> um, and I did really end up enjoying it. And I just love Stephen Graham Jones so much. I think he's a phenomenal writer and has so much um to say that's worth you know hearing and yeah I, I'm a big fan I'm hoping it picks up a bit I am on a break right now from work but once I get off I think I'm just gonna read I don't think we're gonna do anything tonight because I'm still not feeling 100% so um I'm hoping that later tonight I'm like I feel so much better and I wake up in the morning because I want to go to on a hike we haven't been on a single hike this year I mean we live in Colorado we live in Denver <laughs> And it's honestly blasphemous that we haven't been on a hike this year. It's just like everything kept happening. And each weekend we had stuff going on. And this summer has been so busy. I feel like we've been, I mean, this whole year we've been nonstop busy. And it's kind of exhausting. <laughs> um, and then next weekend, Drew's family is coming to town. Then the next weekend, I think we're going camping. And then the next weekend, which stay tuned for that reading vlog. Because I have some good ones on that reading vlog for camping. I'm, that I'm really excited about. Then we have to go to Texas for a wedding the next weekend. And then we have... To, then we get one weekend off and then the next weekend we have to go to um LA for a wedding and then <laughs> all the weddings and then uh we have a couple weeks and then we're actually going to Disney World with my family which is so exciting and that's not a complaint I'm so excited about that but yeah it's a lot's going on a lot happening and I'm just like oh I'm tired but at least I'm like feeling bad now so that hopefully I don't get sick again but I'm excited to see how this one ends up and if it really ramps up, I'm wanting some like good gory stuff to go down. I'm hoping, I hope it goes there. <laughs> yeah, I'm so excited to have you along for the ride. Definitely some of my most anticipated of the year. Um, and just some fun horror reads. I'm hoping for like the best reading vlog in a long time. <laughs> please. So yeah, I'll update y'all later once I've done anything or if I've read a little bit more. <laughs> Hello, my friends it is saturday evening i didn't update y'all again yesterday because i didn't do much at all we my stomach was still having some issues <laughs> so i just laid around i was horizontal for like 90 percent of the night and um i watched what did i watch oh 1992 dracula 
which I hadn't seen before and I actually really liked it. It was kind of weird. It's like kind of art artsy fartsy. <laughs> Directed by Francis Ford Coppola and the art direction is really cool and it's kind of like sexy as a vampire movie should be um, and I actually really liked it. So it has like the good gothic feel to it and yeah really liked it. So watch that. We also watched um, Miss Willoughby Miss Willoughby and the Haunted Bookshop <laughs> and it's just like a cozy mystery set in England and there's a haunted bookshop or is it we don't know and it was actually super cute it's like not the best thing ever but I it's just like a cozy mystery and I loved it and then I did read some more and then this morning I read the rest of I was a teenage slasher. I would have updated y'all earlier about the book, but I was like, I don't really know what to say and I'm gonna just wait. <laughs> and sadly, I did not love it. I'm gonna give it three stars. It was good. I just was disappointed and it was totally different than what I anticipated it was gonna be. Like I thought it was gonna be like fun, campy slasher, we're following the killer kind of thing. And it's more of like a character study on the slasher and like what happened and then there's weird supernatural elements to it though I like the supernatural part of it and I think it made it all kind of like make sense more but I was kind of confused <laughs> so I mean my real issue was just that it was kind of boring I was really struggling um probably like 30 from the 30 percent point to like the 65 ish percent point I was like okay pushing through I was like I can do this um because I was just bored and I was hoping for more action and we do get a bit more near the end but um and actually the like deaths and like the slashings we do get really good descriptions of them and i enjoyed those and i love the ending i feel like that's my thing with every stephen graham jones book even if i don't love the rest of it the ending is always really freaking good and i did really like the ending of this one so go into it knowing that it is a slow burn and it's not a campy slasher fun thing. Like it's definitely like dark serious tone. So, and then maybe if I wasn't anticipating a campy horror, then I wouldn't be so disappointed by it. But I don't know, like with the cover, like I feel like the cover and the pink and just like the name and even the synopsis, I feel like gives off campy slasher. I don't know. I, like I was just thinking like 80s slasher vibes. <laughs> <laughs> and it wasn't that which is fine but not my favorite and that's okay um I still love Stephen Graham Jones he is still an icon and a legend and you can't win them all so <laughs> but I did really like there's some really beautiful friendships in here that I just loved and um we have these two characters like Tolly who is the slasher and his friend Amber they truly just love each other and they care for each other so much and I really freaking love that relationship and I think Stephen Graham Jones always really writes these really beautiful friendships in his books. I wouldn't say I loved our main character Tolly. I, I don't feel like I could, I wasn't ever sympathizing with him but I really liked Amber, his friend, and I liked what we learned about her Um, and I did like the way it was written. It's kind of like the, because Tolly is writing this down to Amber in the future, it it's it's I I like the way that it's written that way and he it, it actually sounds like our main character is like telling a story. I really liked that a lot. Um but yeah, some of the scenes were good. We had some good kills in here. And the supernatural tie-in was pretty cool. I did like that aspect of it, but overall not my favorite. So that's all right. Um I'm really glad I did finish it because I finished it right before we went to the movies. We went and saw Cuckoo. It just came out this weekend and I absolutely loved it and Drew loved it too. Like we walked out of the theater and immediately Drew was like, that was awesome. And I was like, yeah, that was really good. Good storyline, super unique. Hunter Schaefer, amazing acting. Also the guy, can't remember his name. He's an Abigail, but he was great in it too. So I really liked it. Unique story, um, the like scary horror aspect was there. Like I really loved the like scary villain people but yeah i now i don't know what we're gonna do i ate some popcorn and uh i'm not hungry so <laughs> and i will probably start bury your gaze tonight and we'll update y'all once i have anything to say about it so
Hi friends. Okay, so I didn't read at all last night. We got back home from the movies and then I watched Serial Mom. Campy. So fun. One of my favorites. It's on Netflix now. If you haven't seen it, you should. And then I watched Wicked Little Letters. Um, I don't, I can't remember what it was on. I think Netflix too, but it's about like, <laughs> it's set in like historical England and they, there's this woman who's writing these obscene letters to people within the community and it's like a mystery of who actually wrote these letters. It's really funny. It's a really fun time. I just picked it out on a whim and it was a good one. So I definitely recommend it. I think they're both on Netflix. So yeah, I did that and I didn't read last night. I read this morning from like 10 to noon-ish. Um, I did read and start Bury Your Gaze and I am loving it. And then we went to the farmer's market came back home and ate some lunch and then went on a little walk over here and it was actually a really nice walk. We hadn't been to this trail before and um, it's pretty close to us so it was awesome. It was a nice perfect like hour-long walk. Now it's um, 3 p.m. and Drew has a fantasy football draft and um, I'm just gonna sit and probably read. But let's talk about Barrier Gaze because it's so good. Like totally feeling like a five star for me so far. We start out with this main character, Misha, who he writes horror and he has had a few successful horror movies. And then he also has this um, series um, that's been really successful. And he also just worked on a short film that is nominated for an Oscar. So it's his first like Oscar nomination with that. It starts out where he goes to, oh, hi Remy. <laughs> it starts out where he goes to, um, he has this big meeting at the studio and they basically say like, you know, everyone up here agrees you can't make your two main characters fall in love with each other. Like you either need to kill them off or write some other plan for them. Um, and obviously our writer, he's queer and he's like so upset, so mad about this. He's like, there's no way I am going to write them any other way than ending up together. And so we have that going on. <laughs> And then we, right off the bat, like within the first chapter, things start to happen. And there's a pretty shocking scene that I was just like not prepared for very early on and I loved it. Um, and then we start having these weird things happen and it's almost like all of these different movies that he's written are coming true or like things are happening to him from all of these movies. And... <laughs> And it, it feels kind of like goosebumpsy for like goosebumps, but for adults. And I mean that in the best way possible. Um, I love that. Uh, and we're just like, what's going on? Is it supernatural? Is someone actually to blame and someone's messing with him? But these things are happening to him and then his friend Tara, um, who seems like a really cool, fun character. Kind of like the kind of person I want to be. <laughs> They're, they just seem like really fun. They don't care. And um, just like a really cool person. And then our and Misha is also dating a guy, but he has his like high school reunion. He's going home to Montana for his high school reunion, and he's like not out yet in at home. Like he's he said he said he's like Los Angeles out, so um, he doesn't bring his boyfriend with him. So he's like grappling with like his relationship and and coming out totally with his friends and family from back home and growing up. So he's having that going on while also thinking about all this stuff with work, his writing for his show and what he's gonna do and then he's known for this Oscar and then now there's like this weird haunting strange thing going on like someone's after him and it's really cool because some of the like movies that he's written like one's called The Smoker is about this guy that like asks for a light and then if you don't have a light then you know he comes after you and then like another one's like um this weird lamb that I don't know <laughs> it, but it goes into all these different kind of movies that he's written and the characters within that and then how that they're like coming after him and his friends so it's just really strange and good and campy and fun so it's exa like exactly what I was hoping for with I was a teenage slasher it's happening here and I love it um and like right off the bat I was like I'm so into this uh super fast paced and yeah a lot has happened already and I'm, I'm about 30-ish percent in so I am going to sit here and keep reading and I am really excited to see where it goes and I hope that it stays this high up for me because I am loving it so we shall see um but yeah I'm gonna start reading and I'll update you later friends 
okay, so it's Sunday night. After my last update with y'all, I did read quite a bit more of um, Bury Your Gaze. I'm about 60-ish percent in, something like that, and I still am really loving it. Um, and then we had a dinner. We had, Drew made some curry. It was super tasty. And I started American Horror Story Delicate. It's August. About this time every single year, I start watching American Horror Story again. <laughs> I just, I never watch them like episode to episode. I always just wait. And then I'm like, August is the perfect time. It's like the, my pre spooky season show, even though it's kind of spooky, but. And I am really liking this season, surprisingly so. It's based off of Delicate Condition by Danielle Valentine, which is a book that I read last summer around this time. And I did really love it. Um, and so far the season's pretty similar to the book, like almost identical. There's a few things and like characters and stuff, but. Overall, pretty close and I'm really liking it, but because I kind of already know what's going on, I was editing in the background while watching the show and it's on Hulu and I have regular Hulu. So during commercials and stuff like that, I was like, I don't have to pay attention too much so I can edit during that time. Um, but I got a video edited. All I have to do is um, upload it to my computer and add in like the little images of the book covers and stuff like that. So easy to do tomorrow to get it up Tuesday. Um, so happy about that. But Barrier Gay is still really good. We are entering a realm where I kind of thought it was going this way, but this happened, I mean, kind of early on. So I'm interested to see what twists and turns come after this, <laughs> because I feel like the thing that I thought might happen or might be going on, happen now so I'm like okay well it's something else is going to be going on and it's still like still really good fun time we're also getting these like flashbacks to Misha and his childhood which I'm really enjoying and just like him growing up being queer and you know struggling with that and you know his friends and family making it hard on him as well um so I'm loving those little flashbacks that we're getting with that we've had some action we've had some weird strange stuff going on and I'm really excited to see where it keeps going because I I don't know from here actually like I kind of knew what might be happening but that's already happened so I'm like okay well where the heck is this gonna go um still really liking it liking all the characters um action is still non-stop constantly things are going on and i'm so into it so really really good so happy about that um but yeah i'm gonna go to bed i just finished washing my face and i'm gonna go lay down but i will update y'all tomorrow hi friends okay so update it is monday after work i am so proud of myself i got off work i got ready and i just filmed two videos i filmed my july wrap up and some autumn fall new releases that I'm super excited about that are perfect for the season. So got those done. Um, and I think I'm about to make dinner and I believe I'm going to eat and then go for a walk afterwards. Cause I didn't go to a workout class today because I was like, I got to film while the sun's out and before Drew gets home. <laughs> Cause I have a hard time filming when Drew's home. Um, so yeah. So yeah, I just want to give you a quick little update, but I'm going to go for a walk later as long as it doesn't rain, fingers crossed. And, uh, hopefully maybe almost finish barrier gaze by then we shall see but just a quick little update for y'all I'm on my lunch break and last night I didn't update you I did finish bury your gaze and absolutely freaking loved it I'm so excited to talk, to talk about it but I went on that walk and I did finish the book while on the walk it was like perfect timing yeah I made dinner we had some boiled potatoes what excellent boiled potatoes and um vegan chicken nuggies and some green beans. Then I went for like an hour-ish walk and then and I did some editing and I was watching American Horror Story while I edited. Um, so I got a vlog all done and cut all done and finished American Horror Story by like, I don't know, like 10 p.m. I think it was. So that was all good. I actually kind of loved the season of American Horror Story. This is gonna be a total like, <laughs> unpopular opinion I think but I loved it I it is very similar to the book there are some areas where it strays but y'all 
Kim Kardashian was so good. I was absolutely shocked and appalled by her acting. She was amazing. And like, especially alongside Emma Roberts, like Emma Roberts is a fine actress. She's not like a, the best ever, but I feel like Kim was doing better than Emma and Emma has been acting since she was like little. Did any of y'all watch I'm Fabulous on Nickelodeon growing up? Because I used to love that show. Like, like I asked for an acoustic guitar for Christmas because I wanted to be like her and write some little old songs myself. <laughs> But I never learned how to play guitar, but that's fine. It, it just makes me think of when I was younger, but um, but Kim Kardashian killed it. And I'm not like a, I'm not anti-Kardashian. I don't follow them or like stay up to date with them. They're fine. I don't know, but <laughs> I thought she was so good. I was super shocked. I, I just love a Rosemary's Baby retelling. I love it. I don't care. And this one also, I just feel like it's a really good like spooky season watch. Like it's American Horror Story, obviously, but we also get like flashbacks to like, I don't know, like the 1200s and stuff and like witchy things, which I mean, it's perfect for a spooky season. So maybe give it a try. You might like it too. Of course, there's always like a tinge of camp to American Horror Story these days. Like they have seasons that are just so funny and full on camp and then some of them are more serious. This one is more serious and has a little sprinkling of camp throughout um, that I really enjoyed. So yeah, can't complain about it. I liked it. <laughs> but let's talk Bury Your Gaze because man, this is my favorite book I've read in a long time. I love this book, five stars all the way. From the very beginning, from the very first chapter to the end, I was hooked and I loved every second of it. I have no complaints. I don't have a single freaking complaint. And we have our main character and his friends going through all these weird things with these people showing up from his movies. And I just love the tie-in of that. I think it's so smart and it truly did feel like goosebumps. Like it felt like a grown-up goosebumps and like something that is so wild and fantastical and like out of this world where you're just like, there's no way this can be real, but it is kind of thing. And I loved it. Um, and then we also get so much good commentary because it starts out where you know, he's talking about um, Hollywood and he's a writer and it's right after the strikes and like all the talk of AI and like tech within the industry. And we kind of get this like cool science fiction-y element brought in that I enjoyed. And throughout we are getting just amazing commentary on being queer and coming out and the process from, you know, and even in Hollywood and how everything's about like greed and capital and you know, Hollywood and places will latch on to something if they think they can make money off of it. And I loved the commentary on that. There's just so many elements here that I loved. We're getting action nonstop, like something is constantly happening and we are getting this story that, and a story that builds and builds and builds and we take some twists and turns that I just love so much. And there are definitely scenes in here that are gory. You get some like body horror stuff and it's an amazing horror novel. I love it and I am just so happy about this book. <laughs> I, I feel like throughout the book I was just smiling and you know, sometimes and I even got like teary in some parts like at the end I was like almost crying <laughs> and I, I just like thought it wrapped up so beautifully and oh my gosh the writing is so clever and smart and witty and funny and it's just like the perfect amount of like horror action and like lightness too like it brings in so many just like funny campy elements within that i loved um and i love the characters i love the like villains like bad guys that are after them and i was i'm just fully here for it and i highly highly recommend it it's exactly what i wanted and more it has it's definitely a difference from camp damascus but i see kind of like these similarities weaved through um just Wow, I can't get over it. I loved it so much and I ended it like, wow, this makes me the happiest little reader I've ever been. <laughs> I just loved it. So so yeah, if you are into like queer horror and as well as like kind of camp, like out of this world, supernaturally stuff, um, science fiction-y stuff or like goosebumps and you want to get like the goosebumps feels but are a grown up like me, give us a read, pick this up. I can't recommend it enough. It'd probably be in my top favorites of the year, if not my favorite. I loved it. So glowing review, I am so pumped about it. And I don't know what I'm gonna read next. I've been trying to like think if I wanna pick something shorter. It's not like super long, but I'm like, part of me is like, should I read a novella? I feel like at this part of the reading vlog, I keep, I'm always like, should I read something shorter? Because I feel like this reading vlog is gonna go nonstop. I've basically been like 
non-stop vlogging for the past three weeks because it's just like the cycle that I'm in, which is totally fine. Like it doesn't take a ton of my time to like pick up the camera and chat with y'all. Um, but I feel like y'all are getting insights to like every single book I've read <laughs> in the past few weeks, um, which I don't know if y'all want or not, but you know, that's how it's going. But the issue is we do have family coming into town. We have Drew's mom and stepdad coming into town on Thursday. So, and realistically, I would like to start another reading vlog Thursday, or maybe I'll just start it Friday. I don't know what to do, but I will update you once I know anything else. I, we don't really have plans today. Um, I'm just working. I'm going to try to go to the gym and then I need to wash my hair. So that's, <laughs> that's my big plans for the day. We also have to clean because this family's coming. They're not staying with us, but they'll be over at our apartment. And I'm like, I need to pick up. But other than that, not a ton happening. Hi everybody, I just got back from the gym. I did a weightlifting class and I am back home and I have made a decision. I'm not gonna read The Blonde Eyes first. I'm gonna read The Unmothers by Leslie. Oh, I can't remember their name. I'll, of course I'll have the picture of the book cover here, but um, I didn't think it was gonna be available for me. It said like there were still a few weeks left at the library for my hold and then it just came available. So I was like, oh, this is super highly anticipated for me. Sounds very unique about it. So I'm going to read that one and this one. It's also a little bit shorter than The Blonde Eyes first. So I'm like, oh, that's great. Because my next reading vlog, that I'll probably start like Thursday or Friday, is going to be um, YA horror. And The Blonde Eyes first is YA. So, and horror. <laughs> so I think I'll read it for that vlog instead. Um, but yeah, I'm really excited about The Unmothers. It's about this weird, strange town where this girl goes, I believe she's a reporter, and she goes to kind of learn about this thing that is going on. They're, they, this town is known for their horses, and it seems like these horses are now able to give birth to humans. Um, and she, and the town is very like mysterious. People are not nice about her being there, and she starts to uncover and unravel the secrets of this town. So it sounds so good and weird, and I can't wait. I hope the horror is really there. But yeah, I just I just saw that it came available, and I was like, borrow, <laughs> yes. Um, and I'm gonna go ahead and read that in this vlog that's like highly anticipated new releases. And then I just thought I would push the other one to the next vlog. So that works out for me, but I'm gonna go get in the shower. Drew said he's gonna make dinner. And I will update you later tonight once I start reading a little bit. Hi friends, it is the next day. Last night I did read, I read a lot. <laughs> I got almost, I think 60% into um, The Unmothers. I am really liking it. It's not, there's not really much horror. It is a folk horror, so I know that that's a bit, it's usually kind of like slow burn, very light kind of horror a lot of the times until like the end. I feel like that's every folk horror I've read, <laughs> so I'm okay with that. Yeah, let me go over kind of what it's about. It's honestly hard to talk about because everything is very mysterious. We are being so mysterious about all this. <laughs> and it's interesting because some of it's written in a way where it'll be like, oh, the accident, you know, with the accident. And then it's like, but we don't know. And they like, the characters are talking to you as if you already know these things. And, and then you're like, wait, did I miss something? But you're like, no, they're just like keeping things mysterious. And I'm sure everything will reveal itself at some point. But what has happened is we have this reporter and it seems like she is going through a rough time. It starts off with her work sending her to this town, very small town, to kind of like let her get away and out of pity, she thinks, because she recently lost her husband um, and is going through a lot. And she goes to this really small town. There's not much going on here. They have like a pretty large horse, horsing stage stage coaching <laughs> i don't know what it's called i'm like i'm from tennessee i should know what it's called but i don't know anything about horses honestly but i was never the horse girl sorry i just turned on a ring light but um so the lighting's a little bit different but this is kind of where i take a lot of meetings sometimes <laughs> upstairs <laughs> i have a light like better lighting but but yeah she goes to this town and this town is known for horses there's kind of this rumor that this horse gave birth to a human baby <laughs> And I think it's pretty wildly 
just assumed that that's not real and this hasn't happened. They're just like saying it is real. And I mean, like the family and stuff, they're saying like, this is what happened. And it's mostly assumed that really this teenage boy who is taking care of this baby, his name is Roz, um, that he got a girl pregnant and she had the baby and they're just like saying that the horse had this baby because there's kind of like a superstition in this town around the horses and the women. Um, and then there's also kind of like some inklings of maybe there is a creature in the woods that we don't know about. <laughs> kind of have a lot going on. And right when she gets to this town, it's super small, not a lot going on, run down. Um, and she notices like most of the people that she talks to are very hostile and not kind and welcoming and um she feels a little bit um strange being there it reminds me of the the movie with florence Pugh, where um actually reminds me of it a lot now i think about it the wander i don't know if you've seen that it's actually pretty good it is it's not a folk horror but it is a little bit of a like a folky mystery but um and it's historical and this is not this is set in present day the movie's about this girl who supposedly hasn't eaten in like months or like i don't even know how long like a long time like way too long to still be alive and there's something about them wanting to make her a saint like she's a marvel of some kind she's a wonder <laughs> and um it's giving me that because everyone's kind of like there's no like human possible like there's no possible way this can happen and you know some people are like choosing to believe it because they're like why not and then <laughs> but most people are like mm, something's up here so but that's why she ends up in this town to report on this human horse baby thing and <laughs> It's not a thing. It's an actual little baby. That sounds really cute. It's like six weeks old or something. seems like there's some legends in this town that people wholeheartedly believe in. And it also seems like there might be like some sort of creature or something. We keep hearing like, pe like it's like there are a few snippets where people like walk towards the woods and they're like scared of what's in the woods. Um, and then we have someone show up dead. So we have this person and this horse that turn up dead. And our, you know, main character, her name's Marshall. She's like, wait, um, I think there might actually be a real story here. Like there was a murder. <laughs> and she's like, perfect. I'm already here. I'm going to investigate this murder and try to figure out what is going on. Now, I want to say we're following a lot of people. It's jumping back and forth from a lot of people. And we have like the boy with the baby, the teenage boy, and then we have his mom and we have Marshall. And then we have like this guy that's a cop. And then we have this guy that like deals uh, substances. <laughs> and like this other guy that they're like thinking might have done the murder that probably didn't, but, but that is a bit that has a bit of a substance abuse problem. And we're following so many characters here. And I was surprised by that. I didn't really expect that. Um, it is so far a slow burn, but I but in a good way, I'm very hooked on what's going to happen next. Um, and it's just kind of like, I think I mentioned the horror is very slim, if at all. But we're just getting little inklings of stuff. Like our main character, right when she gets into town or hotel room, she's hearing things, something in the walls. And then just like this weird, ominous mystery having to do with like their superstitions and this s creature or something that's in the woods. I am super stoked to see where this goes because I feel like this could really get wild and out there and I hope it does. I really hope it does because I feel like the premise of the book already about a book about a horse having a human baby is so wild and out there that I'm like please make the ending of this book go to like that weird level. <laughs> I want to be scared. I would, I think I would recommend the ebook for this just because there are so many characters at play and it's confusing because they are, it is confusing because so many instances they're like, oh, when this happened, oh, you know, you know this thing. And I'm like, no, I don't know this thing. <laughs> and then I'm like, did I miss something? And I'm like, I didn't, but it's like so mysterious, which I love. I love that kind of thing. So I'm here for it. I'm really liking the book so far. Um, horror, not so much, but I, I'm hoping, I'm hoping it gets there. It is categorized as horror. And as I was reading, like last, after I got done reading last night, I was like, let me look at this on Goodreads to see like what the top 
uh, genres are because I was like I'm pretty sure this is horror and horror was the top one on Goodreads so I'm like okay well then it's gonna happen at some point. I do really enjoy folk horror. It's kind of gothic, but you get like the really nice woodsy vibes instead of like an old mansion, you're in the woods, in the country, and I love that about it. So I think that's pretty cool. But yeah, last night I just colored, I colored and colored. <laughs> I colored a picture of a horse. I think I took a video of it. I was like, perfect, I will color this picture of a horse. So while I listen to my horse book, why not? And um, that was fun. And yeah, I it's Wednesday. I am definitely going to try to finish this book tonight. I have Pilates at 4 p.m. I logged on early today, so I'm working seven to three. And then I have Pilates at four. Um, and then I'm hoping, I really wanna go to a couple of stores. I wanna go, because I'm not gonna be able to do any Halloween shopping this weekend and I feel like I'm gonna miss out on so much stuff. I need to go to Target. I've been seeing Bullseye Playground Halloween stuff being put out. I need to go back to Dollar Tree because the stuff that I was looking for in a couple of videos, still haven't found those. So I don't know, we'll see how much time I have because I, I, I do think Drew's gonna clean some more, but his family is coming in town tomorrow. I need to like vacuum and stuff um, tonight and get everything like finished cleaned up, which shouldn't take me that long. And I figured I can listen to the audiobook while I do that too. So kill two birds with one stone there. And then hopefully finish the book tonight and be able to start a new reading vlog tomorrow or Friday. That's what I'm planning on. Anyway, I'm on my lunch break. It's like 10 a.m. <laughs> so I'm gonna just um, finish my coffee, probably have a little bit of a snack. I'm never really all that hungry in the morning. Um, so I'm gonna do that and then I will update y'all later once I do anything else. <laughs> all right, y'all, I'm off work now and I changed clothes. I'm ready for Pilates, but I wanted to do a quick little baby Halloween <laughs> decor haul for y'all. I got a couple of items from Cracker Barrel this year. If you are familiar or involved with Halloween decor, you probably have seen these. <laughs> I have so much Halloween decor I don't really need anymore, so I'm trying to be more mindful about my purchases. And, and I feel like I'm trying to buy items that are nice and that I know will last a long time and that I am just in love with. And these were some of those. So let's go first off. I got the witch. I mean, she is so cool. She's so pretty. I love that she kind of looks like the wind is blowing through her dress and um, just like the abstract kind of nature of it. And it does come with this lantern. You don't have to put the lantern on if you don't want to. It also does come with like a little light in there, which is a nice touch. These were, they are expensive. They were like, they were like 60 or $70, I think a piece, each one of these. So yeah, definitely on the higher price point. Um, yeah, this year I'm trying to buy less just random stuff and focus on things that I know I really want. And the other item I got was similar, but it's a ghost. So it's a little ghosty guy. He's heavy, <laughs> but isn't he so cool? And he's like holding out his arm with the lantern. I love these, I think they're beautiful. I think they're unique. These are kind of like a year round leave out item for me. I love them. So I was so excited to find them this year. There's not a ton of Cracker Barrels around Denver area. Like I would probably have to drive, I don't know, 30, 40 ish minutes, which isn't a huge deal, but I actually was able to snag these online. Now be aware that a lot of people I have seen like in the Halloween Facebook groups and stuff that they've ordered them and they've come broken or something, but luckily that didn't happen to me. I had a good experience and it's 3.23, I'm changed. I might go quickly swing by Dollar Tree before Pilates and then I might go to Target right after Pilates, come back home, shower. I'll update y'all later when I've listened to a bit more of The Unmothers. All right guys, so it is Thursday. I'm like, what day is it? It's Thursday now, I just got off work, but yesterday I went to Pilates, I stopped by Dollar Tree, they had no Halloween. Well, they had a few things, but not what I was looking for. And I decided to not go to Target or anything after Pilates, I was just like, I'm not feeling it. Came home, we cleaned, we got delivery vegan chicken sandwiches that were so good, did finish. The Unmothers while cleaning and I am not in love with this book. <laughs> 
it's okay. I, I, in the end, I gave it three and a half stars. I feel like it's marketed as a horror and I don't know if I agree with that. It definitely feels more mystery. There's like a slight element of, you know, with this creature and like the superstition that, you know, this town has that definitely could be horror, but there's no scary part of this book. Like on a scale of one to five for scariness, I would give it like a 0.02. <laughs> It's not at all. And it's funny because I mentioned The Wander yesterday and I feel like this book is so similar to that. Um, apart from like some of the like commentary and the themes around the book, but just like the overall feel and the idea of like this really illogical story and someone going to try to figure out what's going on and report on it. And then there's other things to and there's other things at play in this town. So it did remind me of that. Um, overall, this book has a lot of themes about women's rights and feminism that I really enjoyed. And that was probably my favorite part of this book. But I will say that we follow a lot of male characters and POVs in this that I just don't think was necessary. And I did not care about those characters. I really cared about the women mostly. And I feel like folk and I feel like focusing so much on these male characters kind of like took away or did a disservice to the book overall. Um, and in the end, I, I, I had some questions. I definitely felt like, wait, I didn't feel like fully satisfied with everything that we were given. And I feel like there were so many different threads going on here and different like uh, topics and people that in the end, I feel like I still had questions and not everything was really taken care of in my mind. So I don't know. I, d I did see that this is a, a debut and I do think the writing's really beautiful for a debut. Um, I like the setting. Um, I did like our female characters and the overall like idea of this book I really liked. Um, and I think she, and I think the writer did a good job in that sense, but, but it's not perfect. And you know, I was really into it. Like I read it quickly. Um, but that was all with me thinking like something wild was going to go down and you know, we just didn't get that. So not a total loss. Like I still enjoyed it, but, um, it could have just been much, much better, <laughs> but I'm going to close out the reading vlog here. It was a good one. I feel like we had, I mean, bury your gaze is one of my new faves so there we go that's a huge win um the new stephen graham jones not my favorite but you know no huge flops just a couple of ones that i was kind of like uh good not great um but we had one big winner so yeah i would definitely recommend picking up that one <laughs> but thank you so much for being here i appreciate you and if you like bookish content please subscribe and give it a thumbs up if you like this video but i will see y'all next time